good evening. Welcome to another wonderful conversation. I am Shola Deswe, and you know, it's always exciting for me to host the conversation. And you know, it's just an amazing time we have been having in the last couple of weeks since the conversation started. And we've been looking at our positioning within the post-COVID world. And I have been receiving amazing responses and great testimonies from those who have been watching and for many of you out there who have been watching the conversation, especially to let me know the impact it has made in your lives and how it has caused a paradigm shift and it's helping you to align yourself to take advantage of the moment. Now, here we are again tonight and I tell you, it's going to be a powerful, impacting, illuminating, insightful, and thought-provoking time. So right now, I want you, those of you connected to us on Facebook, it makes a world of difference for you to be an instrument that will be used to help someone else um, access truth and knowledge and information that would turn their lives around. So just click on that share button right now and get your friends on board this conversation. Remember that tonight is really going to be, you know, there's a terminology that came out of, an expression that came out of one of the conversations I had, table shaking, table breaking mm -hmm. and table burning as well. So we'll, we'll shatter all negative mindsets here tonight. Again, I'd like to welcome you to the conversation. And in the studio and on the set today with me is a man of God that I respect greatly, a man who has a proven track record of being a pastor, teacher, a mentor, an author who is well-traveled across the globe, impacting the nations of the earth. And his depth in understanding of scripture and the times is really amazing. Tonight, I want you to join me to welcome Pastor Shegun Olubemi. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> welcome, sir. Really, really great having you. And Thank you. I must thank you for accepting to be um, on the conversation. Um, I feel honored, and I know that the time here tonight will be greatly useful. Amen. Thank you, sir. Amen. Thank you. I, I, I want to ask, sir, um, bec and I want us to tap into your wealth of experience. You have been in ministry now for over 35 years. I'm, I'm being conservative probably 40 years, tottering. In the 30s. In the 30s, <laughs> thereabout. And that's a lot of track record and a lot of history itself. itself. Now, we're looking at the subject, the mandate of the church in the post-COVID world. Now, sir, do you think in the 30-plus years that you've been in ministry, um, traveling, impacting and touching the lives of people. Do you think the church truly understands her mandate? Yeah, it's, it's one of the main concerns. Just before this came on, the, before we came live, um, we were discussing these details, the challenge of people who are being thrusted with bringing people to the knowledge of God, not even understanding their mandate. Wow. And instead of that, and, and once you don't, it was a, uh, a Miles Moreau, the blessed memory, who said, once the purpose of a of thing, thing is not is known, not known, abuse, abuse is, is inevitable. inevitable. Uh, in the place where he says, uh, if, you, if you read the four Gospels, and we don't want to go into why we have four Gospels, but if we read each of the accounts, the end result or the ending chapters, the great commission in all of those four chapters, I mean, all of those four Gospels, we always end with, the, you know, 
what you need to do. Yeah. At the beginning of Jesus' calling the disciples, he said to them, follow me, I will make you fishers of men. But that was not repeated post-cross. Wow. So he started with... and be witnesses so there was a change there was a change hmm. and then when he was speaking to them in, 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 when Mark was reporting it he was saying to them you know go and preach the gospel baptizing them in the name of and, and they healed the sick delivered the oppressed yes. and when Matthew was recording that Matthew was saying he said I've, I, I have all power in heaven and I have to give up. go now and make disciples, disciples. of all nations hmm. And so he said, go make, when John was recording, he said, as the father has sent me, so send I you. I don't want to go into that because if you get into that in the book of John alone, and in the gospel you find about 17 ways in which Jesus represented the father. Wow. He, he even admitted he wasn't original. He said, if you see me, you're not seeing me, you are seeing the you're father. Seeing the father yes. I cannot do anything without, without the, father. the father. And so he now was commissioning us in the book of John to say, if you go to represent me, represent me so much the way I represented the father. the father and I lost my identity in him. Wow. And therefore, everything I said had the backing of the father. Mm. So once you go, as the father has sent me, so in the same manner, when you go out to represent me, go ahead and do it and let them see me and nobody else. And I will back up anything you say. Wow. And then when he was now speaking to Peter, he was saying to him, do you love me? You went back to fishing. He said, okay, feed my lamb. Feed my, feed my sheep. Because it started with, with fish. fish. But it's ending up mm -hmm. as a shepherd. Wow. That's a vocational transmogrification. That's right. <laughs> if we want to put it that way. Big grammar, but that's what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. So you see, he is saying to them, you started out as fishermen, but it doesn't end. Hmm. Unfortunately, over the years, what I've found out is that in the earlier days, wow. in the late 70s and 80s, we were into that assignment. Our goal was be disciples. Wow. That was the entry point. Yes. You got born again, you were told that you knew the pillars of discipleship, hmm. the eight pillars of discipleship. Mm -hmm. Now, because I'm into teaching, training pastors and all that, I often give them this. Tell me, how many of you know at least four out of the eight pillars of discipleship? And pastors don't know that. Oh, boy. Now, if you can't have that offhand, how do you pass the message across? Amazing. So, you, you have seen, um, in a nutshell, that through time, we truly have not even understood yeah. what our assignment, what is. Our assignment is. You know something you said here, which, which I think is, is really critical, is that he started them off as fishermen. fishermen. Yeah. But they didn't end up yeah. as fishermen yeah. because he uses yeah. the language yeah. of fish. And yeah. the way you catch fish yeah. is different from... Is different <laughs> You, you, you don't catch fish. You don't right. catch sheep. Yeah. You raise, you raise sheep. sheep. That's right. But for fish, you yeah. just throw your That's net. Right. That's right. And you catch. Now there is nurturing. Yeah. There is growth, observational growth. That's right. There is feeding. That's right. And, you know, again, that tells me, sir, that yeah. we can't put ourselves in a box. Yeah within the context of God's assignment. That's right. You know, uh, unless we understand what he wants us to do, then we, we are not going to be creative in going about our assignment. Hmm. And whenever we try to... When we try to be uniform... Yes. Can in, you in throw a, more light And, and I will that. throw a little more light. You know, in the beginning, in Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created. So there is a fundamental principle that if God is at the beginning of anything, there will be creativity. Wow. There will be creativity. The mark of him the mark at of the God. beginning of anything is creativity. That's why you shouldn't go to three, four churches 
and find everything the same. Oh, the people there should be as diverse. Diverse. Even amazing. a human among human beings, every time you find um, people, Japanese, Nigerians, Americans, uh, Britons, Indians. all looking alike. Mm. You know there is certain neurological or physiological challenges Challenge. they have. Yes. Sir. You know, and they may be, you know, the little people, you know, dwarf, some people call them. And then if you find them among the blacks and the white, the brown and everybody, they all look alike mm. because they suffer from the same syndrome. Mm. And whenever we find ourselves, you know, unity is not unanimity. We do not have to do everything the same way. Wow. Because God expects a measure of creativity in the execution of the assignment. And even diversity is diversity. beautiful itself. That is, that is beauty of life. That's wow. the beauty of life. So when he says to us to go, you know, make disciples, and these people, are, you know, you, you have beautifully analyzed that. I think I wrote about 12 differences between a fisherman and a shepherd. A fisherman goes to wherever there is fish. And that is the reason we do different kind of programs not minding, you know, waiting to decide for anybody. We, different let's, programs. Let's go, out, let's go out fishing. It's a let's popular go, one. Yeah. So we're, let's we're, go out fishing. We're going to catch fish. We keep catching fish. But you will say that no, no fisherman catches fish for the life of the fish. You catch it always for yourself. Either you sell to <laughs> collect money or you roast to eat. Interesting. <laughs> And that is the reason why you know, you say we had a big fish in our church, or we have a big fish, and oh. because of what we could get out of their mouths. Wow. And, and, and so you find it, the, the fisherman is very interested in numbers. Oh, as soon as he casts his net, he is able to include great multitude of fish, one, two, three, two, and then he's sorting, and then he knows I got 200, mm. 300. Mm. And then, whereas if you are talking of a shepherd, if he has 99 and one is missing, he leaves the 99 and goes oh for Lord. the one that is missing. Oh, my goodness. And then he brings the one that is missing here to be able to bring back into the fold and nurture. But the fisherman, oh, the fisherman. will just go and oh, catch you more just, fish. You go look for more fish. Wow. So he looks for where the water is he goes to get. So the fish gives his life for the fisherman. But for the shepherd... He, he gives, gives his, his life, life for the sheep. For the sheep. I need to say that again <laughs> because, you see, tables are beginning to shake. Yeah. <laughs> the fish gives its life for the fisherman. The shepherd gives his life for the fish. For the fish yeah. or, or your sheep. Yeah. And the pastor is either a fisherman. Yeah. Or a uh, shepherd. Or a shepherd. So, and meanwhile, the, <laughs> wow. the Great Commission, our mandate, has to end up. You could go out as an evangelist, you go out, you started winning mm -hmm. souls. Mm -hmm. But it must end up di with, with discipleship. With. It's no wow. longer catching this fish. Because eventually, that's why the instruments of, of, of you know, the instrumentations, uh, you know, uh, this man uses the rod to catch the fish. But the shepherd will use the rod to correct to, oh Lord. the sheep. Oh, boy. <laughs> this man uses fire. Let me, let, so we need to say, I, I'm not sure everyone's got that. So the fisherman uses the rod to catch the fish. The fish, yeah. The shepherd uses the rod to guide yeah. and to correct the sheep. That's right. Same instrument? The same instrument. In two different hands. That's right. With two different mindsets. That's right. So anybody oh watching my. us and listening now can know, can answer the question whether it's a fish. Oh, my. Or it's so, a ship. Well, those of you out there, I mean, Pastor Shegun's put it out. The question, and you don't need to answer this immediately. No. Um, you may be able to. Are you a fish or are you sheep? Yeah. Don't change that dial mm -hmm. because we're, we're not done yet yeah. you know again if you're just joining this broadcast look tables are already shaking the next phase they'll be breaking and this is shattering our mindsets and and negative paradigms that have held us bound so back yeah. to you again yeah. the rod yeah. in the hand of a fisherman the rod in the hand of a shepherd yeah the fire in the hand of a fisherman 
he uses this same fire to, to roast, roast his fish. The, the fish. In order to preserve the fish, either to be eaten or to be sold. Whereas, the shepherd is going to use that fire to warm, to warm and sheep. keep them fresh and keep them, you know, so they could produce, so they will not die of cold mm. in the winter. Yes, Same sir. instrument, but different uses. And the, the reality is that in some churches, oh, all right. people are being roasted. That's right. Taken advantage that's of. That's right, that's right. And, and money is gone. And money is or gone. Or everything, and their properties are all hanging. gone. And in other churches, they are being warmed. That's they are right. being nurtured. They are being nurtured. You know, sir, so in a sense, the essence of the local assembly yeah. is to nurture. That's right. It is to develop, it's to groom. That's right. So that the sheep at the end of the day can yeah. be fruitful. Yeah, yeah, can be fruitful. Because at the end, you see, the, uh, the, the, the shepherd also has his reward. Whoa. The shepherd has his reward. There's the wool that comes from the, the fish wolf. that will be clothing. <laughs> there will be the milk that will come from the uh, flock, from that, the flock. That, that, that he will be able to sell or he will be able to drink of the milk and all the benefits that accrue for a shepherd. But that is only after the shepherd has tended, tended. his flock. Wow. The Bible says when Joshua gave, had shared land to all the tribes of Israel, then the children of Israel gave him, him a portion. A portion. Iman Ephraim. He was the last. He was the last. To have a portion. That's the way it's supposed to be. But today, sir, what's happening? Uh, well, the other side. We so just turned the other way, whereby the, the flock are just, not, not flock this now, because the fish, the fish are having to pay our way. They pay for our luxury. They pay for the car. They pay for our home. They do everything. Because and they're impoverished. Because the fisherman yeah. must be full first. That's right. It's the mindset. So wow. when you begin, and, and, and you know, people in evangel, you know, uh, when I say something, I say, oh, you're condemning evangelists. No, I was an evangelist for Deeper Life for about three, three and a half to four years, wow. full-time evangelist. Wow. There's no local wow. government in Niger State and many states that I don't know. I traveled around this country. I went in. I did the work of an evangelist full-time. Mm. So... I know more about, I mean, I was called evangel an evangelist. Yes, Everybody, they, the they call me there. evangelist you, you know until recently. So I know the field. But at the same time, while we're doing all of these outreaches in 80, 87, 88, 89, we had... Convert the day Nigeria and Argentina are playing ball, then you will see them in Bible study. <laughs> those who are your disciples and those who are your converts. Prioritizing you can football uh, over spiritual, over spiritual life. things. My goodness. So, 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 so we have all of these characteristics whereby the, the we have refused to understand. And we still think about I we make you fishers. Fish that was pre cross pre post cross hmm. after resurrection it was never repeated wow because god presupposes christ presupposes you are smart enough to know that there's no fisherman who catches a fish to keep the fish alive so that must have been a major reconfiguration for even the disciples that he selected that's right because it's a major one because major, they were fishermen. Yeah, Seven major, of them were major, full time fishermen. Major, major reconfiguration. And so he, they had to now change their mindset from the mindset of fish, fishermen to the mindset of a shepherd. And wow. because as a shepherd, then you now understand, you know, that's why the arguments today should we shut down church? Should we do this? Should we do that? And if you think like a shepherd, you will not have a problem with any of that. Whoa. Because you've discipled the you people. You've discipled the people. The people. You, the, the people have grown. The people are mature. They can handle themselves. They can do something. And I've always said this years ago, that if anything happened, that our churches are shut for six months, when we reopen, I said it more than 15 years ago, Wow. that when we reopen, we're going to have lost half of the people, not necessarily as membership, but we lost them to compromise, to sin, to whatever, Whoa. because they were not trained. They were not, my goodness, to stand on their to own. To stand on their own. To live the life. Because we apply different patterns. In the New Testament, the church, the gathering of believers, was for edification. 
Mm. You were never called a member of church until you were saved. Wow. And be baptized. Mm. Then you are added to, to the, the church. physical church. Yes. And the spiritual church. Mm. Or the universal church. Yes. But then, here we are. We say the church is hospital. Bring the sick. Bring everybody. No, you should go out there. Reach out to them. Then bring those who have been healed and saved. And bring them in, in here. Yeah. And then train them. And send them send out them to out. do the same. Oh my goodness. The New Testament pattern of, 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 of raising people is to grow privately. Sir, you, you said send them out. That's right. Which is some form of release to go out. That's right. And to find expression. That's right. But there is the fear that if you send them out, they yeah. may not return. Yeah, because we have not understood the purpose of ministry. As soon as John the Baptist said, this is the Lamb of God that takes away. Some of his disciples say, is see the one we're waiting for? It's all right. Once you introduce people to the Lord, they fall in love with him. Mm, with who now? Sir? With the Lord. Once you introduce people to the Lord, they fall in love with him. Not the pastor, not, not, not the, the one not, not the shepherd, who, not the man who introduced them. And so if, and if we were doing real ministry, as soon as the people say, oh, look at the people you introduced to the Lord. They don't seem to be coming for weekly prayer. They don't seem to be coming papa and mama for laying on of her. You say, no, uh, he must increase and I, I must, must decrease. Oh, my goodness. Because it's not about you, it's about him. Wow. Those are the words of John. That's right. So those are tough words. That's right. The Lord, he said, teach us the way John taught, taught his disciples to pray. Mm. It was why they were with the Lord. He said, didn't you hear what happened to John? He has been killed. And then Jesus, you know, left. You know, your interest will be covered. Sir. <laughs> if only you can let the people fall in love with God. Oh, my goodness. You know, sir, uh, I mean, I'm looking at my time and wondering, are we going to have enough time to really thrash this out? <laughs> no, we, we haven't. <laughs> the mandate of the church. That's right. Sir, is it still great commission, as we understand it, go and preach? So you go out into the streets and preach. But you see, I'm also instructed, yeah. and I need your insight, yeah. on what Paul wrote to the Colossian church yeah. about reconciling things. Yeah. Because we, we seem to have ended it with just going on the streets and, That's like right. we've said, yeah. catching fish. That's right. What, what's your take on that, sir? You know, the, the, the scripture, <laughs> you know, I've heard this, I've heard just calves, and uh, I've heard Andrew Womack and a couple of people who have said this, that the Bible is so simple, you need someone to help you misunderstand it. <laughs> <laughs> And unfortunately, we've had a the lot. Says, you need an idiot to, to help, help you. <laughs> and unfortunately, we have so many people in the, on the platform, on the pulpit, who help us misunderstand it. Oh, my. I, 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 because what you say now, we can go to, I, I will take a little in, in Acts of the Apostles. I go again to, to the book of Psalms. And you can see that. The, the Great Commission, why we go out the mandate of winning people and discipling people, uh, our assignment actually is to reconcile all things, including creation. All things back to God. Not just to the all original men. State. Not just all men. And I quickly, you know, I, I need to be a little bit fast to pick this. You know what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8. And then when he begins to talk about the utmost expectation of creation, of creation is not waiting for the rapture of the church. Whoa. Now, now before you get angry, just calm down. Believe whatever you want to. Oh my I have no goodness. problem with rapture. I'm just <laughs> saying creation is not waiting for rapture. They are waiting for the manifestations of the sons of, of God. The sons of God who have not showed up yet. And the Bible now goes on to say, for we are groaning. He said, for creation is groaning. It's groaning. If I like the way, uh, is that New Living Translation? He said, creation is groaning because we are groaning. Whoa. And they are waiting. And, and, and I like the way Amplify put it. He says, he says, they're waiting for when we will exercise our full rise of redemption. Hmm. So when we, who have been reconciled to the Father, 
know who we are and know our full rise of redemption, then we can liberate them and make them do what they were supposed to do. Wow. So no creation was created in a vacuum. Psalm 119, verse 89, forever, no, oh Lord. No creation was created in a vacuum. No. Interconnectedness. He said, he said in Revelation, the All things, I said, the universe and every your faithfulness continues to the end. And for, I said, for all of the universe, for all things, continued according to your ordinance wow. because they are your servants. Hmm. In other words, the sun is his servant. The sun. The moon is the his moon servant. Is servant. Water is his servant. Hmm. Rock is his servant. Rod is his servant. Wow. Fish is his servant. Wow. And that is why he can hide money at the mouth of fish for Peter oh, to go Jesus. to get. That's why he can bring water out of the rock because rock is his servant. <laughs> And they drunk of that spiritual rock, which is Christ. Do you, are you following what I'm saying now? He's, he's and so you, you, will find, you will find Joshua just saying, moon, stop, sun, sun stop. Yeah. Because they are his servant. Responding to his purpose. They have to respond, respond to purpose. The goal of creation is to serve the creator. And the creator is not, did not, what he did was to deputize was mm. to see this authority in his specimen, wow. in the species called man. Mm. That's why the psalmist said, what is man? man. That you have given him every, he said you are mindful. The word mindful is that your mind is full. full. Why is your mind full of it? He said, and you have made him the crown of your creation. Mm. So God wants to enjoy his creation, but the only way God enjoys his creation is through you. When we reconcile all things. When you reconcile all things to himself, then you will know the capacity of all things. Because even the preaching of the gospel can be accentuated and aided wow. by creation. Sir, <laughs> I'll ask you this question. Yes. If we're to reconcile all things, yeah. does that include political systems? Oh, uh, we're, we're not there yet. I, 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 we're, just, we're just introducing it. Because if we say it's reconcile all things, you see, the mindset, the mindset of the church, this church mindset, in the 21st century, post-COVID-19 world, you need to change that. Oh, my goodness. To our leaders, to our pastors, I've said it for many years now. I'm tired of hearing myself saying it, that we need to change our mindset from church mindset to kingdom, kingdom. mindset. Oh, that's another... Now, because when we're talking wow. about church mindset, you think Jesus is Lord over church members. But Jesus is Lord <laughs> over the entire universe. Believers and non-believers, government, creation. Jesus is Lord over everything. Mm. And if Jesus is Lord over everything, then you need to change your mindset to know that the lordship of Jesus extends to the banking sector, oh extends to goodness. the politics, extends uh, extend to Nollywood and Hollywood, extending to every other phase of life. Wow. Because he is Lord over them. That's a redefinition of the Lordship of Jesus. Or well, uh, that's been the original that's definition. Been the original but defi we, but we're bringing it to light. Bringing it to light. So we, we just, all we do is, uh, oh well, you know, Jesus is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. And, and, then, we're thinking, and then we think he's in our church. church. That is why he is Lord. But he's Lord over them. That is why he said the heart of kings is in the Hands, hands of, the of the Lord. And like rivers of water, he, he turns, turns it. it. And if you look at it carefully in, in, in the scripture, you will find that. Is it Belteshazzar? Is it um, Nebuchadnezzar? Is it um, Pharaoh? And just all the kings, he gave them dreams. It's always marveled me that these are heathen kings. Yeah. And yet and give them dreams. Mm. One, when they are there, they are genuinely concerned for the people they are leading. Genuine concern. They have genuine concern for the people. Even though they're hidden kings. Yeah. If, look, even when they're hidden kings, they want, because the wealth of a king is in the wealth of his people. My, my, that my, is my, why, my. that's why it's called common wealth. It's in the wealth of his people. If the people are in poverty, if there's no riches in the land, the king knows he's poor. He suffers. <laughs> So they understand that. So with that concern, they may have bad advisors who tell, who tell him different things, but they're genuinely concerned. So God will have to speak to them too. There are men who are godly in their kingdoms. And those godly men, 
needs policies that the will right help them. Policies, right yes. policies in place. And they are praying. And the way you can, they can't influence the government. They mm. can't influence the king. So God has to go to the king to be able to so show you, him you, what you, to do. Because that brings us to Nigeria. So That's right. If we've got the righteous praying. That's right. Then we're saying by our prayer, we're giving God express permission. That's right. To speak That's or right. infuse the That's heart right. of the king. That's right. As a response to our prayer. That's right. You know, connect that to what we're talking about creation. Mm. If all things, because in the kingdom that Jesus came to operate, you can make anything do anything. You can make anything become anything within the within that kingdom. Yes, sir. You can decide to keep your money in the mouth of fish. <laughs> you can that take five loaves and two fish and feed thousands. This is the lifestyle of the kingdom. That's kingdom, not church. Not church, kingdom. Because that distinction we... we... Kingdom, not church. Hmm. And so, because of that, God understands that these people are leading his people. And they need to know the right thing. So the righteous can orchestrate policies in prayer. What your Marco, uh, Maxwell say, 60... Uh, 60 degree, degree leaders. leaders. You can make the leader do what you want if you know your right wow. of redemption. Mm -hmm. Because if creation are waiting for the manifest manifestation of the son of, for them to be liberated, mm -hmm. then just imagine you know what you are. The president of Nigeria drinks water and water is part of creation. creation. And you have authority over that as a redeemed man. Oh, he breathes <laughs> air. And you can program the air that he breathes. You can speak to the air. <laughs> he walks on the earth. Mm. He walks on stones. Yes. And you can tell because uh, you remember when that prophet got to that place, he said, altar, altar. Oh, altar, altar. hear ye the word of the Lord. And the altar and grew here and turned into and pieces. Turned to pieces. Right there. So stones were here because everything was created by the word. Yes. And everything responds to word. Wow. So this guy breathes air. These guys, they drink water, they eat food, they eat produce of the earth, which are part of creation. Mm. And creation is crying to say, I, we need to help you. So there's a way you can know your right of redemption and program that. Even the water they drink will bring conviction to them. Wow. They just feel guilty that that's, something is wrong. Yeah. I need you to come and interpret we're, this we're dream. We're touching the supernatural plane now. That's right. And that clearly suspends the, the forces and the laws of nature. That's right. Wow. What, 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 what did you hear about Deborah? He said in, in Judges chapter 5, he said the stars, the stars the fought stars in their courses against their Cizera courses. and there. And then somebody said, well, how did the star fight? We never saw any star fighting. <laughs> because we didn't read the Bible. Mm. Joe was talk, talking about, do you know the children of Actoros, Orion, yes. and... I mean, to the, to, the to the shepherds. And let the shepherd to where the baby was. And then God spoke to Joseph and they took the baby out. But by the time you were looking at, the Pharaoh was looking, is that a killing some innocent people? Because the star guided these people out of that way. Yeah. And so when Caesarea was running away from the battlefield, the star guided Caesarea to the house of jail, who was going to get the victory. So if it starts, are available to find. And somebody Use will say, maybe you are getting to esoteric theology or something. Because we are ignorant. We are ignorant. And because the stars are his creation. But they are his creation. So they respond to him. They respond to him. The wise men were guided by stars. That's all. To locate Jesus. That's right. And the same star guided this guy to mm. go into the hands of the person that will take care that's, of his head. That's GPS technology. That's right. Sir. That's it. That's how. He's been there. He's been there all along. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's been there. So this, these are the things we are missing. And coming back into even the reconciliation of the... Look, look at the passage. I, I don't know. Can, can I just read Please, the verse? Go, go ahead. And go ahead. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 and 19. Now, you know when we read this passage, you know what we get out of it. We <laughs> make it say what it's not saying. You <laughs> know it. Said, and I say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build, which is his confession we know, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it, and I will give you the keys of the, uh, of the kingdom, kingdom of heaven, of and whatever you bind on the earth will be, will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose. Now, in this is the entire commission, Whoa. both of reconciling man and reconciling all things. Is there? Mm. 
in that text. In that text. But now what do we do? I bind you because whatever I bind in heaven is bound on that. That's all we look at. That's, we that's really we just put yeah. that. But look, look at it. It says, um, it says, I will build my church. I will build. So, so we know the builder is Christ. Hmm. Why are you afraid that uh, people want to Islamize the, the nation or atheists oh, are coming are, or are, uh, big gates is coming? You are breaking tables now. So. What, what is your problem? <laughs> The owner of the church says, I will build Sir, the church. Bill the Gates, church you are building you, will go. You just touch Bill Gates. That's another issue. So why are we bothered? Why am I, why am I feeling headache about Bill Gates? I am not the head of the church. So somebody told me, oh, the uh, chips is coming. Oh, they want to do one world government. I said, it didn't start yesterday. Nimrod started it. Mm. Nimrod yes. was the first man. It was not, we were not many years away we, from um, Creation. creation. When the guy said, look, the way we are going, everybody's going to be scattered. Let us do something. And God allowed them to go for so many stories so far. God did not throw any bomb, nothing, no fall down and die, no binding, no cursing. He just made them understand different he things. He removed their, took away their understanding. So he said, good morning. The other man said, you're insulting my father. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> and so is, the same this word. Is, this is something this, else. <laughs> you, you know, you know, there's a funny thing that Yoruba say with uh, the Ibera people of Okene. Yeah. Okay. They the Okene people they say, Otami, Otami is my is friend. My friend. Otami in Yoruba is my enemy. Is my enemy. Adami. Adami is uh, uh, my father. father. Adami in Yoruba is, is cutlass. So his best friend went with him and he visited his father. He said, Otamide, Adamida. I said, my, my enemy has gone. Where's my cutlass? That was what Yoruba man was and running away. <laughs> and then the Okene man said, wait now. I'm trying to introduce you to my father. But God only introduced something into their understanding that the same word meant different things. And they couldn't understand each other you, and left. You know, sir, it's also interesting that <laughs> when we look at this <laughs> Antichrist theology. Yeah. It is the will of God That's right. for the Antichrist to emerge. In fact, I thought, I thought John said this thing about 70, 70 something, 80 years after Christ. I say, even now. Now. The Antichrist is here. Anti -Christ. They are anti-Christ. Because they are Because when you get back to First uh, Thessalonians, when he say, he that sits in the holy place, and they see the abomination, abomination yeah, we know yes. that it's also happened 70 AD, yes. we know that happened. Yes, we know, but now, to say that it's happening in Israel, no, everything in, this, everything in the New Testament is spiritual. Yes, sir. Everything in the New Testament is spiritual. It's no longer physical as we use. The house is, used to be physical. The temple used to be physical. Now it's, it's, all. it's us. So if you say, he that sits in the holy place, hmm. then your mind is going to Don't somewhere you. in Jerusalem. You are not seeking. You say, he that sits sit in, in the temple, temple of God. Whoa. And then who is, we try to rival with God wow. and call himself to be worshipped. Wow. Who is sitting in the house of Where is the temple of God? It's your it's heart. Your if your temple, the, your heart is the temple of God, who is rivaling with the temple of God? Is self in you. Oh, Lord, my God. And serving us is now saying, I want to rival. The Holy Spirit says, stand up and pray. You say, I want to sleep. That's the self that is rivaling. Mm. So a measure, and when you allow yourself to keep ruling, you are allowing the spirit of spirit Antichrist to walk against walk Christ. So if, so first he said, I will build my church. You should be afraid for your church if it is not Christ building it. But if it's Christ's church, I Bill Gates has build. no business with it. I will build my church. I will build my church. And he already told us that the gates of hell. No, you are going too fast. I have not gotten there. Ah, okay. He says, <laughs> he said, I will build. So we know the builder of the church. Okay. He said, upon this rock. On this so rock. So he tells us that it's unmovable. Mm. That's one characteristic of rocks. Is unmovable. And uh, if the rock cannot be moved, then the church cannot be moved. And then <laughs> you are an architect. You know that you design yes. your houses according to the, the land, yeah. according to the, all the things, the topography, the, secure, the topography. And you design your foundation. You design your foundation to fit, to fit into, into that, that land. Topography. Okay, so why will Jesus not design his church? So why you will know, Jesus there's, not there's design? An, this, you can see me doing this. <laughs> because... If I 
who designs building that's right is concerned about topography and uh, concerned to the structure point and longevity where i am designing for the building to last Strength. How much more Jesus? How, why would Jesus be foolish to give us church and ah. not make provision for everything? And so he, he, he says, I will build the church. So we know the builder. Upon this rock, we know where the wow. church is located. And if it's on the rock, he can't fall. My goodness. If we don't meet for the next 10 years, the church cannot fall. Yeah. Except you are not a member of the church. Whoa. The church that I belong to cannot fail. We're not talking local assembly no. now. No, we're talking about the church. Those who have committed themselves to Christ, My who have been goodness. discipled, who know that they are members of the body of Christ, it cannot fall. And so we know the builder, we know he builds on the rock, <laughs> and he said the gates of hell shall not prevail. We always thought of a politician who is making a law mm. against us, gates of hell. Mm. Uh, somebody who is opposing you, gates of hell. Mm. How about COVID-19? Gates of hell. Is that not gates of hell? Yes. How about financial uh, recession, recession and all that? Is that not gates of, of hell? So he has made provision to say, I am going to build the gates of hell of whatever sort. It no doesn't matter mean there the, won't be an attack. No. But that's exactly he prepared no. that. You design your building to weather storm, to weather so winds, know, flood winds and all blow, that. and your roof remains intact, your building remains so intact. So the builder of the church said, no. Nope. Nothing's going to happen to my church. My goodness. And then he went on to now explain COVID-19, post-COVID-19 world. If you just joined us, <laughs> please just stay glued to the... This is Pastor Shegun Lubemi, and he is... He shook tables, now he's shattering them and setting them on fire. So, <laughs> let's look at it. <laughs> let's see COVID-19. <laughs> These is are it? simple scriptures we have read. Yeah, but we have no application. I, I, I hope I get to a point where I talk about, the church needs to do what, they, what I call reimagining the church. Huh. And that will be involve critical thinking. Oh my goodness. So we have to, in critical thinking, we have now, we do have to come to a point of, Understanding in the new science and methodology of delivery. The science and delivery of our mandate. Hmm. Sir, let's, okay. let's, let's go to... Let's see COVID-19 from COVID here. here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see that. It says, and I will build my child, the gates of Hades shall not prevail. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now, we thought the keys of kingdom of heaven is the keys to your mansion in heaven. But when he was Are teaching his disciples. now that there's no mansion again? <laughs> when he was talking to his disciples. <laughs> when he because was telling. Some people out there, they are Julius Berger in heaven. Is <laughs> making he's, he's constructing. You know, <laughs> you, know <laughs> you, are, you are trying to create, you are trying to distract no, me sir, now. Let, I'm because, not. <laughs> because I take them back to John chapter 14 where he spoke about mansions. I was talking to a pastor and I said, Jesus did not say in my, in my father's house above. He said, yeah, he said, I said, okay, read it. When we read, he said, it's true, I didn't see you there. I said, why did you believe that? It was songbook theology. Hmm. And if you follow songbook theology, they need to be revised. Okay. We need to revise a lot of our songs. There's a lot of revision going okay. on here. <laughs> right. So let's, let's now, leave now, mansions. Now, let's go. Jesus was not saying, when he was teaching, he said, when you pray, say, our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom Come. come. Your will be done on, on earth, earth as, as it, is in, it is in heaven. Before this time, they had been saying, he said, first of all, they say, the kingdom of God is at hand. The word at hand is trotu. Trotu. The trotu. You know, trotu yes. helps you to accelerate. So John was saying that, and he said, the kingdom <laughs> is in the trotu. <laughs> you can accelerate the arrival of the kingdom in you. Hmm. The kingdom is there. But by the time Jesus was saying, he said, if I, by the Spirit of God, cast out, Devils, yes, the kingdom, the kingdom is among you, and then later I said, The kingdom is within, within you. you, so the kingdom moved from in the hand to among you to within you, and the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and, and joy, joy in the, the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. These expressions, so therefore, the kingdom of heaven is the rule of heaven on earth. That's just what it is. All we have been waiting for is that we are going to, uh, we want to quickly go out to heaven. Especially uh, now. Especially COVID, now. People Everybody are saying, let's go. We want go. to go. Let's go home. We are tired. Let's just die and go home. The question is, if the reason 
God saved you was to take you to heaven. We should have killed you the day you got born again. That way we, we guarantee that you arrived there on time. <laughs> After salvation in, in church, because we then take you out. And then I shoot you, and then, you. and then kill you and so bury you so that you go away from us there. Him. Those of us who have assignment there can wait. <laughs> Oh my. What did he say in the book of Revelation? He said, I heard a loud voice say, the kingdom of this, this world, world has become come. the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Has and, he shall, and he shall reign forever. I might say there's no going heaven to heaven. No, I never is. said that. But I'm saying that the kingdom of this world first hmm. must, become must become the kingdom of, of our, our God, God and, and of, of his Christ. Christ. Because the last time he taught his disciples to pray, he said, your kingdom come. Your mm. will be done on earth. We don't pray your kingdom come because the kingdom is in us now. Mm -hmm. You see, and he came, the administrator of the kingdom is the Holy Spirit. Mm. When, when they were coming out of, the, uh, of Egypt, in chapter 19, you remember that God began to say, I, I, I separate you, chapter 19, to, as a peculiar nation, as a peculiar yes, people a to me, and a, a priest, a, a holy priest nation, too, yes. and a royal priesthood, and all that. And the, but now, when Christ came, he has all made us kings and priests unto the unto Father. The Father yes. So we are restored by what it means we are restored by. The rule to us. Yes. We can hear we him. Can't hear God, him. you see, when you fail to live by relationship, you will live by rules. That is it. That's another one. Because if you won't relate with me, then I put rule here. If he comes, comes let him fill this form. Fill let him form. do this. Meanwhile, I gave you opportunity. To, gave you access to, to me. And so you chose rules. You chose rules because you rejected. So once they rejected relationship of invitation to relationship in chapter nineteen, in chapter twenty, God gave them rules. Wow. And if you know anything about rules, you, you never, never can get to keep it. Just meet up. And so that became the administrator of the relationship they, or the rules they chose to obey. So they never get to a girl's relationship. Now, Jesus Christ has come and then brought us to relationship by his blood That's and right. gave us an administrator. Instead of the commandments of the law, he now gave us the Holy Spirit and he is in our heart, administering our lives. No more rules. No more rules. He is the administrator, administrator. of the kingdom. He's right inside of us. So the kingdom, the king is king now. Right now he's king. Right now, living. Because Jesus is not going to be king. Jesus is already king, king now. He's not going to be Lord. He's already he's Lord already now. Lord. So the administrator of his will and his kingdom mm. and his estate in the believer is the Holy Spirit. Wow. And because he is the administrator, then you cannot say that. <sighs> anyway, sir, COVID. COVID-19. COVID-19. So now <laughs> you see that before in that verse 19, he said, now I'll give you the key so that whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose will be loose. He did not give us key to church. He gave us keys to, to Kingdom. kingdom. And church. in the kingdom, he already said, gates of hell so, will not prevail. So gates of hell will come. So you can't lock church. No, you can't lock, well, church. You can't lock church. You can't lock church building. But you can't lock building. You can't, you, you, you can't lock kingdom. You can't lock the kingdom. And if a church says that uh, they are not building, kingdom people still have ministry. In fact, during this period, hmm. I have been blessed to lead some people to the Lord wow. through social media. They just reached out to me and said, we read the posting, we want to give our lives to Christ. Oh my. I've read, I've been opportune to help people who are in all kinds of problems. They won't even dare to share with and people. And that's kingdom. That's kingdom. They just say, well, we read your posting and we, I want to confide in you. From, I'm saying from Nigeria to America to South America to different parts of the world, I have people reaching out because this is about kingdom. This is kingdom. So, and they say, I will give you keys. The keys will require that you will, don't forget, he already said, gates of hell shall not prevail. See, Jesus doesn't waste words. Hmm. When he says something, he presupposes you are smart enough to break that thing down. <laughs> he presupposes that you're smart enough. Ah. When he says, I'm building on the rock, then you shouldn't be afraid hmm. because you are built on this firm foundation. Mm -hmm. We have an anchor. Hmm. So we you are on the rock. Then he says the gates of hell. He's already telling you that the gates of hell will try. He says he won't prevail. He didn't say he won't attack. He won't attack. But he won't prevail. So you should have prepared your mind. Then he goes on to also say, and I give, give you now the keys. 
to the kingdom. Mm. This keys now will be, it is a key, it's a keys. keys. Not one key. So you are going to meet with economic recession. There will be keys to coming out. You are going to meet with COVID-19. There will be keys to coming out. Wow. You are going to meet with different challenges. There will be key. The keys, if you are operating kingdom, the keys are there. Hmm. You know, I was sharing before we came live. I was sharing with you. In 1918, when the Spanish yes. flu hit the world, hmm. you know how it came into Africa, how it yeah, came into Nigeria. That, that was instructive. In America, the first world war killed 116,000 people. 116,000. And 16,000 people. On people, six hundred and seventy-five. Nineteen eighteen. In nineteen eighteen, so the argument was that different pandemic. Yes. And the church has not moved. The church hasn't moved we've one bit. We have not understood years. any we have not understood anything. Now, pastors were saying, why should the government lock us? We should have been considered as essential organ of the society. That's in 1918. 1918. I'm not sure you have heard it this time. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> that is what you see on the Facebook. We should be an essential. I mean, the question that you even asked, Pastor, is this. Why didn't the government, why did they consider hospitals and banks and shopping malls as essential duties? And no, the church was not. Does that mean we are not as essential as we thought? I, we thought we are. Because essential is defined by the people's need. The government defined essential by the needs of the people. And now we define it by tithe and offering. And those who gather every Saturday and Sunday. So I th well, okay, I think our time is gone. <laughs> so, uh, we, no, no, no. We're, we're still, we're still here. <laughs> you know, you hear some things and you just feel like it's over. That Jesus said it's finished on the cross. <laughs> so you need to say that again. Yeah. The definition of essential services. Yeah, yeah. It's means the value when you added. Government considered it. The they didn't see us as essential. The, the value you add to the people. How much of the needs of the people you are meeting. I hear pastors, the same argument they were saying in 1918, they said the, church should, uh, the government should allow, us, allow sick people to come, so we pray for them. Yes. Others were saying, in 1918, 1918. some other ones were saying, we should, we should take the church out there, they should allow us to go to the people, we meet and take care of people's need. Every argument we advanced today was advanced wow. in 1918. Did that include conspiracy of course, the, the thing was that some people, some of them said that uh, the church is trying to, this is the Antichrist that was trying to close the church. And the gates of hell should not prevail against, we should resist the Antichrist. Closing 1918. 1918. And 102 years later. We are still saying the same thing. And the church? Yes, we have not moved. The church of Jesus is yeah. still. We, so we have not. We can be considered an essential duty workers as pastors. So what came wow. out of that, what came out of that was that there was adaptation. The pastors now felt, you know, after, you know, after we made all the noises, we didn't get government to change their mind. Yes. We now adapted. Yes. Those who said Facebook was the instrument of Antichrist, when to use the instrument of Antichrist to <laughs> bring to their members. <laughs> Because I see their faces there every day. <laughs> well, you know them, sir. <laughs> because we've had them preach those things before. <laughs> now they are there. They are now using the same instrument that they castigated before. Wow. So in 1918, what they then did, what the church did was that they adapted. They now thought outside the box. Uh, outside the box. The, 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 the best technology they had to reach out at that time Must was print, print media. Print. So every pastor started preparing their sermons and printing them out. And they even had what they call delivery dogs. They had people...
who will now mm. go and they will pay them some money to go to homes, knock doors, and then deliver, deliver these, salmons. These they were now delivering to their members. In the midst of the lockdown. In the midst of the lockdown, and then and then they know. began to deliver salmons. They will make comments if they have, you know, a political uh, statement to make. It goes part of their salmons. And then they, they were now serving their members. They maintained mailing lists to see that members and that was how they were able to weather that period. period and then there was a consensus language that most of the leaders uh, came to and the language uh, what they said is that they would we would do our best to be the church that the world needs now we will do our best to be to be the church, the church that, that the, world the world needs, needs now, now. So the underlining word there is that the world needs now because they have been the church they wanted to be. No. Not necessarily the way we Jesus would have had that. Wow. You know, you know, Pastor, I get tired of preaching hmm. or people preaching at me. Hmm. Not just because I'm a preacher. I love listening to preachers who are making sense. That's why everyone preaching, making sense. I, I text you, I chat to you, I say, you're making sense, do a great, you're doing a great job. I yeah. encourage you. But I don't want you to preach at me when I'm hungry, sir. <laughs> give me some food. Whoa. You may say I'm not born again. Just give me some food. And that's the message. That's, that's the preaching. That you the need. Yoruba people say, Ebe, you want to call me, what? A hungry <laughs> stomach has no ear. To hear? To hear the gospel. instruction. <laughs> give me some food. And if you want to preach, I'll follow you. Go and look at the ministry of Jesus. The times he gathered the largest crowd was when he was healing them or when he, when was, he feeding was feeding them. them. Need. Even one time, the people said, Master, we'll be looking for you. Uh, where are you? He well, said, you are looking for him because food, of his food. food. In my Bible, I just wrote, I said, yes, sir. We'll follow you because of food. Nobody gave us food. We didn't follow. You gave us food. We will yes, look for we, you. Yeah. So why was Jesus, and I want you to go and study all the healings that Jesus did. Most of those healings, they came to believe after he has healed them. Mm. This one you say is because you have no yeah, faith. That's you not why no you are faith. not. Faith. No, faith. you put Great it on faith. the, it, look, you are missing it because actually the healing, how are we healed? By his stripes. Mm. The stripes was not loaded, was not front loaded into his death. It was the death, the death shed the blood, yes, redeemed the land, that. redeemed and saved us. But the healing was, was done before, before he went to the cross because he came by the stripes. Wow. So you can see an unbeliever and heal them, make the lame to walk. Um, uh, you said, uh, they drove me out of the synagogue. You said, do you believe on the Son of God? So who is the person? He said, I am the I'm one. The one. Ah, you? <laughs> the one that opened my I believe. <laughs> he came to believe only after. Afterwards. Wow, wow, but we are not wow, willing wow, to take wow, the risk wow, Jesus wow, took. Wow, 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 I wrote a book, His to End Time Revol Revolution, that Mercy extended. Hmm. And in there, I, I began to see all of the miracles of Jesus, how it revolutionized the people. How it was done to us, it was touching the people. The reason there was commotion, the reason there was confusion, the Roman, you know, it would go from Caiaphas to Pilate, Pilate yeah, to yeah. Herod, they were, you know, changing. It's changing. because you couldn't kill such a popular figure. Hmm. Some say the Jews were, some of them say, well, he's a prophet. This other one is the one giving us food. No one wanted to accept The other one is, is healing death. us. Yes. So you know you're going to have a problem. If you read the church history, actually, Rome set up. Caesar set up, you know, panel to inquire yeah, why that man yes. was killed. And even Pilate would eventually... My hands are uh, there. My hands are so not that there. if they finally Final... say from Rome, my hands my are not there. Because the guy added value to the society. Oh, my goodness. So it was into social activity. The summary of these conversations, the mandate is summed up in what? Adding yeah. value add, add to value. society add and value. reconciling... If another, because together. another thing is going to come. In a couple of years down the road, and I'm speaking prophetically now, mm. a couple of years down the road, there's going to be shaking around the world. Mm. It won't go this way, but there will be nations that wow. will restrict public gathering because of the confusion, the upheavals that will go there. Wow. Many nations, and it will be happening like Arab Spring. It will be happening wow. at the same time. Wow. If you are essential enough, the government will let you function. Oh, my goodness. 
The government shut us down because we were not essential services. When we become, uh, because uh, your essential, uh, the, <laughs> the essentiality of your assignment is defined by the values that you add to the society. Wow. By how much needs you make. Pastor Shego. Thank you. <laughs> Can I have a commitment from you, sir? That there will be a part two to this. We'll have part two. You Thank have you. Be it's been 60 minutes loaded, honestly. I don't know if you could sit down wherever you are, but we've had to come to the end of this conversation. I have a commitment from Pastor Shegun. We're going to do a second part of this, and we will milk the time. I'm sure that sitting down there, your tables have been burnt. Glory to God so that he can give you new tables and erect new tables <laughs> for you. <laughs> the tablets of Moses were broken. That's right. He got a new set. Yeah. I hope you've been tremendously blessed. Thank you Thank so you. much, sir. We Thank truly you appreciate you. Great having you here. Thank you for being with us on the conversation. Looking forward to seeing you next week. And I'll let you know when Pastor Shegun is going to be back. This has been Explosive. From me, Shola Adesue, it's been a pleasure. God bless you and have a wonderful evening. The COVID-19 pandemic is real. However, you can prevent its spread through these measures. Wash your hands often with soap and running water for at least 20 seconds, or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Cover your nose and mouth with disposable tissue or flexed elbow when you cough or sneeze. Don't touch your eyes, nose and mouth with unwashed or unclean hands. Maintain a distance of at least one meter or three feet from people. Stay at home and if you feel unwell, self-isolate. Remember, safety begins with you. Stay safe. If we all observe the basic rules of engagement and stay at home, the virus will not spread. I am committed to stopping the spread of COVID-19. I am Lighthouse.